but having it like this is it's cool this uh, new video with the 3d construction is out and it's monday time to prepare for more boat work and um, now i will continue to the inside of the boat making a very light model of the interior in full scale inside the hull so let's see how it works out in the aft cabin I'm out of materials. I need a little bit more to complete this model. And I really think I should do that to, to have a feeling of all this. I think it's very, very positive what I've experienced doing this. Uh, and I only know lack a little bit. This is the bad and, and it, the off bad is fine. But I need a little bit more to complete the wall and, and make a sense of the floor in the pilot house and, and how it will be to enter the aft cabin. It will probably, probably, probably be a bit crap, but that should be okay. This is, it is a small boat. It's, uh, it's necessary to do sacrifices. That's the name of the game. Some of the viewers has been worried about the mast support for the mizzen mast, the aft mast. This is where the mast foot is attached, and this, this, this. No, sorry, this. This is where this, the old support was. So we see the old support was sort of like this, not directly underneath. So my plan is to make a pole up here and maybe a foot to extra support the mast. And it should be sufficient. It's not a huge mast and it's not a huge sail. Yep, let's continue. As we can see, the floor and pilot hose is about water leveled. But if we see the door, let me focus. But if we see the door, then we see it's not straight at all and and the stern needs to go further down for this to be straight but if we look at the window then it's okay again what's up on a boat nothing really you have just to take some measurement and do a decision and my decision is to follow the floor, not the door. It will probably be okay. Most of the time, it's not up. It's just almost up. to remove some nails from some used uh, planks that I've got for free.
I was lucky enough to got to, to get this wonderful uh, 1960s, 70s uh, decoration plates. Uh, it's from the dark era, obviously. So again, I need you to imagine, imagine that this is an entire bed. There's no openings here, there is a mattress. And this is the aft cabin. And uh, you can see the rudder, top of the rudder underneath. Uh, and you can also see the exhaust come out there. Anyway, this is the aft cabin bed. It's one meter and 80. In the shortest distance, this is from here to the hull. That's one meter eighty, which is more than my height. So it will be about two meters to the end uh, of the stern. And now you can see also this back wall is angled. It does not follow that line. It breaks off there and goes towards that way. So it follows the shape of the hull, sort of. Anyway, this is the floor of the pilot house. So there is about 45 centimeters, I guess. No, it's 50. <laughs> it's 50, 51, 52. There is a two-step little ladder, ladder up here. Also, there was talk about uh, head somewhere. I know, yes, I know, it's not wishful thinking to have a head here, uh, but it is possible. So uh, I will consider it still. I'm still working a bit with that concept. So what do I use this part for? Don't worry, I have a find a way. I might have a chair in a corner or something else. Don't worry, I will use that space. Um, I am actually harbour master of a very small harbour and there is a small boat from the 60s, 70s, I think, that sank this winter. And I have contacted the owner and the owner has no ability to remove the boat and has agreed to give it away to someone that might remove it. And uh, I've tried to find uh, someone, but has not succeeded. So I have to take it away myself, and I will do that now. So the job is done. The boat is floating, and we are getting it away from this harbor. Then I have done my job as a harbour master. So now I have a personal problem. I have an old boat again. So what do I do with such an old small vessel? I guess it's from the 70s. With an engine probably ruined by salt water. The sunken boat is now uh, in my boathouse uh, to rest. I'm not sure what to do with it, but uh, it's a nice specimen from the early 70s, produced in Arendal, Norway. And uh, it's called uh, Kamo plastic, plast, plast. And um, it's good for a 50 horsepower outboard engine, preferably a two stroke due to weight, of course. We're back in the harbor and it's incredible mild. It's about eight degrees above freezing point and uh, it's wonderful and uh, we are really getting closer to spring which means we are also getting closer to the time we can start glassing which means that I have to make a decision within a few days for the interior and stick with that decision. So the toilet is placed in one of the possible 
places placement uh, in in the head. If I put a wall here to sort of uh, keep the toilet dry while showering, it will need to be about where the red laser light is. And that will leave a little bit less space for the shower, which could be a problem, I think. I may try something else. So if I leave the toilet like this, I obviously need to build a little, a little bit up underneath, but at this, this way I will have quite a lot of room for the shower, actually about 80 centimeters, and I can still have a sort of a wall made of, I don't know, I don't know some clear plastic or something like that between the shower and the, and the toilet. But I need to, to rush on to get finished for the summer. And finished, I won't be, but uh, I, I have a small hope that I can use the boat some, somehow in the summer, maybe not with sails and all that. But there are lots of things that needs to, to be completed for me to use the boat. I need to complete engine mounting, um, attached uh, shaft, of course. I need to, to fix the steering, steering position, then I need a wall for that. And of course, I need a diesel tank to be installed again. Uh, the next thing we need to proceed with that then, uh, until it gets hot enough to, to actually start uh, gluing things together with, of course, uh, fiberglass, is to make the templates and to cut cut the walls so we can start, start with uh, glossing them as soon as it's hot enough and stable weather. So yeah, we're getting close. So the diesel tank is now cleaned from paint and I'm now polishing it uh, with the, not a polishing pad actually, it is a polishing pad, it is, but it's quite rough, but it's still a fine uh, pad. So it's this one, a flap disc, um, it's fine. Anyway, this is starting to look nice and uh, it is way cooler to have a clean tank. So I'm taking the time to polish it. It's not really necessary. I could have it like this, but having it like this is, it's cool. I've decided not to do that wall in the aft. I'm just extending the floor of the pilot house into the aft cabin. I guess many of you will not find that a delightful idea. It's way outside the box, but I am the one that I'm to live with this, so I'm doing it. And, and uh, please be cons constructive about it. So, uh, it means that I will now have to decide where to place the fuel tank because that will decide where the next structural board will be structural member structural plate i guess what was the problem last time when i removed the tank is that it was just above the uh, drive shaft and it might still have to be but i was hoping to get it further aft it was situated about here and now I'm hoping to get it here because it will be easier for me to get access to the shaft and also to this part. So it will mean that I probably will set up a structure about here and then have the diesel tank here in this area and a new set of um, structure about here somewhere. I, I will see that maybe half a structure, just to keep the tank intact and uh, not for it to move. It 
it's time to go to the plumber shop to see if we can get a 90 degree bend to this one and a new valve for the feed to the engine. So we've been at the boat, no, not the boat shop, the plumber, and um, it's the plumber Svalan. They have very good service. So they actually helped me putting this stuff together. So now we have a 90 degree angle and also a valve that I can close. Of course, also a stopper, just in case. And then also for the diesel, to the engine, we have a new valve and it plugs right into here. And they have checked that the screws are actually matching, so it's the same. I can install it here, of course I need to remove these boards uh, and get it lower. Uh, it's better, but then it will interfere with uh, the shaft sealing, sealer, sealer. Oh, I can't remember the word we use for that. All right, but Annie, you got the point. I, I need to, to get to this if it leaks, if I need to tighten these screws or these couplings. I'm not happy with having it here either. So the question is, can I move it even further aft? Can it be placed here? Well, it's too high for the floor, but it's still possible to lower it about 15, 20 centimeters. This is obviously the place to go for me. It will implicate the balance of the boat, having it this far aft. As when the tank is full, it will sit a little bit on, on its aft. And when the tank is empty, the aft will come up, of course. But it's not radically much, I think. And I might balance it off with water tanks too. So the implication would mean I would need to remove this floor. But that's okay. Uh, I will make a new floor and it will be lower as... That will be a storage room and it will only need a floor just above the shaft. So yeah, that should be okay. So this is the aft side of the tank with the sump. And it is sufficient space to be able to dig something out of the sump, actually. Part of the problem when not having a workshop but have to work within a crowded harbour uh, at winter storage is that you have to bring all your tools every time for it not to get stolen. And I forgot to bring the laser and I know I need the laser to finalise where the, the bulkhead behind the tank is supposed to stay. So. It's just to take a long way home and find it and get back again. Excellent. I wish I could just snap my fingers and have the laser here. Could I? Let's try. It's about here.
Then uh, the tank is correctly placed. It's uh, it's drain sump is on the side of um, the ceiling on the side of the stuffing box and I will have an angle and a drain that will go out like this. So that should be excellent excellent access to uh, the tank both draining uh, and also inspection in, in general. It's almost uh, 10 p.m. and Saturday evening. I don't think I can stay much longer today and if we are going to make a video that have to be done tomorrow, rendering everything. Um, I guess also the problem now is if I'm going to make a structure, I can't do that by myself or I have to do the way Say Life did Mats by gluing attachments to the hole all the way. No, not going up there, but some of these. And uh, and attaching what I cut to that and, and later then detach everything. Or I have to have a helper. I'm not sure I have an available helper. So, but that is... It will mean that this is what we had time for in this video. If Sarah agrees uh, that we have uh, video material enough to have something. Until next time, thanks for watching. And if you did uh, like what I have done since last time in this video, please leave a like. And um, consider subscribing. Otherwise, don't like it. And uh, until next time, have an excellent life.